Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are not in my kitchen, we are in my mom's kitchen. Two days ago, we went to turn the water on and we had zero water. So currently at our homestead, we have no water, we need a new well pump and it's a whole thing, but thankfully they are fixing it today. But I am going on a trip and I'm responsible for doing some of the meal prep. I'm doing a dinner and a breakfast. If you were with me, we already took care of breakfast, but today I need to prep the dinner and dessert so that I don't have to do a bunch of cooking when we are gone. So my mom has graciously offered to let me use her kitchen. And since I'm here, I'm actually gonna be helping her out and I'm gonna do some meal prep for her as well. We have four recipes we're gonna be making today. And I tried to think of everything that I could bring from my house. We're gonna make a Mediterranean style chicken. So this is some chicken thighs that are thawing. We are gonna be making a yogurt sauce. So this is some actually homemade Greek yogurt. It was just yogurt that I strained. I didn't wanna go buy Greek yogurt when I had plain Greek yogurt. So I just put this in a strainer overnight and now we have some homemade Greek yogurt. So we're gonna make an herb yogurt sauce. We are gonna be making some blondie brownies. So I tried to think of all the things like chocolate chips and butter and I brought some homegrown eggs over there. And then for the herb sauce, I had freeze dried some dill that I bought at the farmer's market a couple days ago. So I have some dill, some cilantro. We're gonna be making a roasted vegetable couscous salad because I can make that and it's gonna hold really well until we're gonna eat it. I have some broth here, some green onions. So we're gonna make blondie brownies and this one is the one I'm gonna take out of town with us. And this one I'm gonna make for my mom. And I tried to think of all the, the containers that I would need after prepping this food so that I can put it in the containers that I'm gonna bring with me out of town. I asked my friends, do you guys have any preferences on what I make for dinner for going out of town? And they all said they wanted the same recipes that I made last year. I do have a video where I prepped a bunch of food to go out of town with these same group of ladies. And I didn't wanna make the exact same thing. So today's recipes are inspired by that menu that I did before. It was a Mediterranean style menu. I did Moroccan kebabs, a, a carrot salad. We made blondie brownies, but the recipe didn't turn out very well. So that's why we're going to redeem ourselves. And I made a yogurt sauce. So it's kind of the same flavors. We've got a yogurt sauce. We've got a Mediterranean style meat and we have a veggie, cold veggie salad. That's going to be delicious. And then we're going to redeem ourselves with a different blondie recipe that I found online. I will link all these recipes down below if you're interested. And we need three cups of butter because I am doubling the blondie recipe. My mom was out of town and she had one of her neighbors help her take care of her garden and the fish pond she has. And so she asked if I could go ahead and double this so she can bring one of these pans over to her neighbor as a thank you for helping her out, keeping her plants alive and the fish alive while she was gone out of town. So this butter is very, very cold. So I'm gonna pop it in the microwave for about uh, 20 seconds or so. I don't wanna melt it. You all know I love to cook. I'm gonna greatly enjoy spending the day in the kitchen with you today. But when I'm out of town, I don't necessarily wanna spend a ton of time in the kitchen. So that's why I'm prepping all of this food ahead of time so that all we'll have to do is grill the chicken, put the dressing on the salad, and that's it. Then dinner will be ready and it's gonna be a delicious homemade dinner in you know probably 10 minutes worth of effort. So that is five minutes, the oh, five minutes, oh my goodness, 15 seconds on that. But my mom doesn't have any brown sugar that isn't rock hard. She bought that same Costco brown sugar that I bought. And so instead of dealing with chiseling it out, I'm just gonna make some homemade brown sugar that's gonna be soft and lovely and delicious so that we don't have to worry about dealing with that rock hard brown sugar. So to make brown sugar, it is one of the easiest things you can do. It is literally sugar and, and molasses. We need three cups of brown sugar. And we need light brown sugar. So I'm gonna start with just a little drizzle. 
The more molasses you make it, the darker it's gonna be. So that's probably a tablespoon for three cups of brown sugar or three cups of white sugar. This has a little bit of brownness to it because it's an organic cane sugar. So this is a little bit light still. My mom's here. Hi. <laughs> it's her kitchen. Hi. She's actually gonna run out to her garden and start harvesting some stuff. What are you harvesting, Mom? Uh, lettuce and sugar snap peas. Ooh, yummy. Ro romaine and red lettuce and sugar snap peas. I think that's all there is at this point to harvest. You'll have to show us your haul when you get in. I will. So we thought we'd come out and show you an update on my mom's garden since I'm waiting for that. Oh my goodness, mom, your peas look fantastic. Yeah, I, I'm not sure my neighbor picked any while I was gone. Wow, your lettuce looks great too. Yeah, Beautiful. I'm going to do it right now because it's bolting. And It'll get bitter. Yes, and I did this right before we left. Oh yes. Redoing. So if I don't cut these now, they'll bolt and I won't have a second harvest. And look how beautiful your onions are yes, compared to mine. Yeah, look at my spinach. It's bolted. Oh, yeah. This is. Pull that out. I'm just, yeah. I mean, I'm going to pull it out. Hold on. I gotta put this here. So this is a bunny cage that my mom has. And then, oh my goodness, mom. Yeah, look at all of I, those. I sampled one a minute ago and I thought maybe they'd be uh, woody, these big ones, but they're not. They're still mm -hmm. yummy. So still blooms, so if I harvest everything today, we're going camping on Tuesday for two weeks, um, I should have fresh peas when we return. Mm. They are so good. And look at my onions, they're Walla Walla sweets, and that's the best I've ever had them. They are a hundred times better than my onions. Oh, here's a big weed. I had carrots in here. I've never grown carrots. Look at that. They look great, Mom. I'm so happy. I've never grown carrots. So I'm looking, I've got some baby tomatoes coming on oh, yeah. and a couple of romas. Um, but I don't think I have as good a soil. Well, no, they look a lot better than when I left them. All right, I need to head back inside and keep cooking. These are delicious. See you inside. Now we are back to our regularly scheduled program and that looks pretty good. It's a little bit on the light side. I think I'm just gonna put another teaspoon and we'll call that good. I just reread this recipe and it says melt the butter until melted. I'm gonna put that on for 30 seconds and I might as well let this brown sugar turn more into brown sugar while that melts. I brought some eggs from home. know how much melted three cups of butter is it's apparently a lot so I'm gonna have a big mess to clean up and I don't really know how much I spilled probably a couple tablespoons <sighs> that is a lot of butter so I do need to grab maybe two more tablespoons for what I spilled on the ground I got the floor clean more butter melted and we're going to add that in here perfect now one of my eggs was bad that i originally cracked into this second container i'm not always good about cracking my eggs into <laughs> A random container not putting it directly into my final mix so that was just a good reminder thankfully I did not put that into three cups of butter and three cups of sugar 
because that would have been devastating. So I kind of lucked out this time, but it's just a really good reminder. Let me make sure this is one cup here that I need to not crack my eggs directly into. I don't know if that's one cup. Not crack my eggs directly into my butter and sugar because I have done that before and it is pretty sad when you lose that much butter and sugar. All right, so now we're gonna add our dry ingredients. I love bars because they're so much easier than say a cookie because you just put it into a pan and then you put it in the oven. Oh, I need to preheat the oven. So that was two cups, so we need three. Then you put it in the oven and you bake it. Okay, three cups of just all purpose flour. We put the eggs and the vanilla in here. Now we're gonna add our baking powder. I will link all these recipes we're gonna be making today down in the description box. Teaspoon of salt. And that's everything other than the graham uh, chocolate chips. Okay, we're supposed to mix that until just mixed. So that's good there. This is a really, really sticky batter. I brought enough chocolate chips from home for one recipe. So I'm gonna get these in here. And then my mom had, she didn't have semi-sweet, which is what this recipe calls for. She had dark chocolate or milk chocolate. I thought because blondies are so sweet, we would go with some dark chocolate. Oh, those have changed a little bit of color just because of temperature changes. That's okay, they'll taste just fine. And I'm gonna get these stirred in here with a spatula. So this is a really thin blondie batter. So I hope this is delicious. I'm sure it will be good. not quite yet preheated so I'm gonna take a second to go ahead and clean up this mess get all of this stuff put away better wash off my mom's molasses for her and then what should we do next I'm trying to think what would be the best you know what let's do the chicken because oh you know what let's do the roast vegetables because the vegetables need to roast in the oven so while the vegetables are roasting we can do the chicken always trying to think of being as efficient as possible I will make sure to do all the dishes and everything before we're all done so that I can leave my mom's kitchen back the way I left it. All right. The oven is at 322, so it's almost ready for us. I, I will go ahead and preheat the lower oven to 400 and let's do, let's do 400. veggie salad the base of the salad is going to be couscous this is Israeli couscous the pro couscous I've never made this before so I'm excited to give it a try but the veggies we're gonna add into the veggies we're gonna roast to add into our salad is a sweet potato some cauliflower sounds like my ovens now preheated for the blondies but we got those in there and some carrots and then we're gonna add a ton of fresh herbs but I'm not gonna add those yet. So I think what we'll do is we'll do three carrots, a sweet potato. You know what? I'm trying to think now. When I was looking online, they all had just different vegetables that you could add. And really popular one was zucchini and red pepper. And I was thinking that if I roast those two things, they're not going to 
sit in the refrigerator as well because we're not eating it for two days. And so I thought cauliflower, carrots, and sweet potato both would hold up to the roasting process and then the chilling process and waiting before we dress it. But now I'm thinking carrot and sweet potato are pretty similar in flavor. And so I don't know if I want to do carrot, sweet potato, cauliflower, and couscous. If you hear the baby, he's here and he's hanging out with my dad. Hmm, friend, I don't know, I don't know. I am gonna add some raw jalapeno and a bunch of herbs. We're gonna make a vinaigrette dressing to go with this. And I just need to sit here and think about it for a second. Well, I'm still thinking about that. So while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna get going on the couscous that needs to cook and chill. I'm just gonna follow the directions on the back. So this is the water that we need. Now we're gonna add the, wait, am I supposed to add it now? Bring the water to a boil. Add salt and butter and oil if desired. Stir in the pearl couscous. Okay, so we don't add this yet. So let me turn this on. I'm gonna fish out the couple couscous that I already put in here if I can. I am gonna add the butter and the salt, and I'm just gonna go ahead and add that right now. I think I'm gonna skip the carrot because I have enough cauliflower and we'll do cauliflower sweet potato and that will be good carrot will be for another time oh my goodness mom look at that harvest that is incredible the romaine is on the bottom but i'm not sure it's all going to be good some of it has begun bolting like some of the, even the red there this is the second harvest you're gonna have to just take a piece off and taste it well, you just, you're the expert, you decide. I'm no expert. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, take, take a so, piece off and taste it. Well, I'm looking for one as an example that has, if the stalk has started to lengthen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this one, I think. Yeah, you can see how the stalk has started to lengthen. Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah. So right we'll try to take a bite of this one and see. Okay. Is it sweet? It's not bitter to me, but it's not particularly sweet. She said when the aftertaste is bitter. Yeah. What do you think? The aftertaste is bitter. It's not bitter until, whoo! Yeah, until Ooh. the end. All right, I'll Ooh, I got a big bowl of peas. So I was expecting, jo oh, my husband, Josh, picked this up for me at the store. And I said, would you be willing to get a sweet potato? And in my mind, sweet potatoes really are yams or yams are, in my head I call yam sweet potatoes. And so it was really funny. He was at the store and he said, I was on the phone with him. I asked him on the phone to pick up a sweet potato. I text him sweet potato. And then when he was at the store, he was looking at the sweet potatoes and yams and he was thinking, you know, when Becky makes sweet potatoes, she usually buys what these look like yams. This is usually what it looks like what she buys. And he's like, nope, she said in text sweet potato. And he got what I asked for. It's just, I was expecting a yam, which is kind of funny. I don't know why I always call yams sweet potatoes, but this is actually a sweet potato. Are yams a type of sweet potato? I don't know. Do you all know? Come come show the... Look at the peas. It's beautiful. Aren't they beautiful? And that's a big bowl. I was using scissors to protect my manicured nails instead of snapping it with my thumbnail, mm. blindly through pea vines, I cut my finger. <laughs> Those are good. Aren't they good? Those mm -hmm. are really good. And I tasted the romaine that had begun bolting a little bit, mm -hmm. and it was really sweet, mm. just fine. So there's uh, one more ahead I'm gonna harvest. go harvest, and hey. then maybe I'll get a second growth on them. We're gonna be gone for two weeks, so. I thought I better do everyone that's close to bolting because it'll be gone to seed in two weeks. Yeah, for sure. And maybe the stock will send up more heads in that time if it's not too hot. Could I put some of those peas in my salad? Oh, certainly. You can yeah, roast them. Good. Yeah, with your couscous. Perfect. I think that's the missing piece that I'm missing is a little bit of, well, I'm gonna put a bunch of herbs in this salad too, but I think a green type vegetable. I'm just gonna wash my sweet potato. 
I always peel my stuff first and then I wash it. I don't know why I do that, but I'm gonna wash my cauliflower. I think the salad would be prettier if this was a yam, not a sweet potato, because the, the couscous, the cauliflower, and this are all kind of the same color. You know, maybe I should have done the carrot instead of the sweet potato. Mm, now I don't know. What are life choices? I don't know. I'm gonna cut these into just kind of bite-sized pieces. Or maybe I could do like a monochromatic salad and then just the peas and the herbs would be the color if I don't add the carrot. It says cover, reduce to a simmer, and then simmer for 10 to 15 minutes, stirring occasionally. And friend, I just realized I forgot to set a timer on our blondies, and this says it needs to bake for 30 to 25 minutes. And what does it say it should look like? Bake until the edges are golden brown and the center is lightly golden and set. Bake for 35 minutes. Set on a wire rack, allow to cool completely before cutting. Sprinkle with flaky sea salt if you are planning to do that. I'm gonna set the timer for 15 minutes. I have no idea how long it's been since I put that in the oven, but we'll go with 15 minutes and then we'll check it. I figured out what I'm gonna do with this salad because I'm kind of making this up as I go. I looked at recipes online as inspiration, but we are kind of making up our own. So here I am going to put the cauliflower. I'm gonna roast these on separate pans because they're gonna bake at different times. And I wanna make sure they get golden brown, but they still remain their crunch. So I just heated the oven actually to 425. And we are gonna do a white and green salad. So it's gonna be cauliflower, sweet potato, peas, and jalapeno and then all the herbs so white and green it'll be really pretty i think i just washed a handful of my mom's peas i'm going to cut these on a bias because sweet peas cut on a bias i think are just beautiful we eat with our eyes first two peas in a pod look how beautiful that is fresh out of the garden It is time to get these seasoned up. Each tray is gonna get a little bit of olive oil. And then we're gonna do a coarse black pepper. Our timer's going off for the couscous. But real quick, I'm gonna get the salt and a little bit of our beloved roasted garlic pepper, or garlic powder, roasted garlic powder. I'm waiting for the oven to preheat, so I checked on this couscous. I'm just giving it a taste test, and it is done. The recipe didn't say to strain it, but there was a little bit of extra water in the bottom, and I didn't want it soaking up into the couscous and getting soggy. So I strained it, and then I Google a recipe to see if I should rinse it or not, and I wasn't sure. So I went ahead and I Googled a recipe to see if I should rinse the couscous or if I should just let it cool on its own without rinsing it in cold water. Oh, I just found one that has fresh cucumbers and tomatoes. That would be really good too. But I knew that if I sliced cucumbers and tomatoes, those would not last for two days that it needs to sit in the refrigerator. So that's why we're doing a, one with a hearty, hearty vegetables, crunchy vegetables. Let's see. It doesn't say. They're done. I think I'm gonna put them on a cookie sheet, but I'm not gonna rinse them. Yeah, I'm using your mats. I like the small couscous. I've cooked that many times, but I've never cooked this before. It smells good. We're just gonna let this cool a little bit quicker this way. I'm gonna toss these vegetables in the oil and then we're gonna get these in the oven. one at a time because they're gonna cook at different times. And I want them crunchy, like I said, on the outside, but golden brown on the inside. And if I put them all in there at one time, it will, I think they're gonna steam. And I don't want that. I want roasty, roasty, toasty. Okay, we are making great progress. 
Now, while I continue rotating those and the dessert cooks and our couscous cools, ooh, that's hot still. I think I'm gonna stir it a couple times just to help it cool a little bit faster. We can get going on the chicken marinade and the yogurt sauce and the dressing for this salad. I was gonna make a rice salad, a lemon rice salad that I've never made before, but I was thinking that this was another thought that I had. The rice, if it sat in the refrigerator for two days before we served it, it might get kind of crunchy and dried out. So I thought couscous would hold its shape better. What made me think that? I don't know because I've never made it before, but couscous is pasta. And I know that pasta salad usually holds up pretty well. That is still very hot in the refrigerator. So that was my thought. I wanna make the dressing for the salad. We're gonna make a lemon vinaigrette. So I have two lemons here. And then I did forget to slice the jalapenos that I wanted to add. So I'm gonna slice those really quickly. I'm gonna leave the seeds in. I know all my friends love spice, so we're just gonna go ahead and get them sliced up. I'm making this vinaigrette up. I'm just kind of going based off ratios of the acid, the oil, and I'll add some sweetness. I'll probably add a little bit of honey. But first I wanna know how much juice I'm gonna get from these two lemons. I'm gonna juice these up first. When I make salad dressings with lemon juice, I do like to use fresh when possible. Not always happens, but when possible because it just adds such a better flavor than bottled. I think I need a little bit more lemon juice, so I'm gonna go ahead and juice up a bunch more. And I need a bunch of lemon juice for the marinade for the chicken. So I think what I'm gonna do is I might as well just juice all of the lemons right now while I have the juicer out. And I need four lemons, two, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I need four lemons for the chicken, and then I need one more lemon for the dressing. So we'll go with that many lemons that we're, we're gonna juice up real quick here. There we go. Now we've got over a cup of lemon juice. I'm gonna pour everything that we're not gonna use for the dressing in this bowl. That's probably enough for the dressing. Now I'm gonna add a lot of pepper, salt, roasted garlic powder. I can link this below. Amazon does carry this Penzi spice and it is so good. So I'm gonna put that much in there. Then I'm gonna put some paprika and take the lid off. Maybe about a teaspoon. About a tablespoon of honey, maybe a tablespoon and a half. And I like to do about one part acid, so either vinegar or lemon juice, to two parts oil. But some people like to do a one to one ratio, some people like a one fourth some people like a one to three ratio of vinegar to oil. It's just whatever your preference is. And that's how easy it is to make any kind of dressing. And then I always like to add a little bit of sweetness. We do need to give this a taste test. But first I wanna check on the blondies. I don't think they're gonna turn out. I reread the recipe. I thought through what I did. I don't think I did anything wrong, but they look weird. <laughs> So I did put some foil on them because they were cooking too quickly. Yeah, they're done, but they're not done. They're done, but they're not done. Ooh, that's hot. These did not turn out, I don't think. What a waste. Let me check on the sweet potatoes real quick and then I'm gonna show you what those look like. I'm gonna preheat this top oven now to 425 so we can bake some other veggies. Not quite browned enough. OK, 
Okay, let me show you the disaster that are these blondies. They look greasy for one. Oh, well, now they're, I overcooked them, but when I took them out, yeah, those are, they're not gonna set up, I don't think. They're still raw in the middle. I almost think this amount of batter should have been in a bigger, not an, an it said eight by eight, I think, or nine by nine. Let's see, found it. Let's see, it says an eight by eight right here. So I don't know what I did wrong. Oh, look, if your bottom of your baked blondies are slightly greasy after removing, place them on a rack overnight and wrap them. Well, maybe they're not a total disaster. I don't know. We will see. I'm sure it was me that did something wrong, but I, I rethought through my, what I did. They're not burnt on the bottom. They're just pretty dark. I guess time will tell. I won't know until they're completely cool and we can cut into them whether they turned out or not. If they don't end up turning out, no big deal. I will just purchase something at the store for dessert for us and that will be just fine. But I am bummed if they didn't turn out because that was a lot of sugar and butter that, oh well. This salad dressing is gonna be good, I'm sure. And if it's not, I can tweak it until it is. This is probably way too much dressing that I need, but whatever we don't use, I'll just bring home and it's salad season. You saw my mom's harvest. I have a lot of greens coming in and it will get used up. Oh man, that is almost perfect. I think I'm gonna add just a touch more honey almost perfect on the first try. A little more pepper, a little bit more salt. I have a new spoon. We're gonna try this, see how it is. Perfect. Whew, that is delicious. The roasted garlic is really what sets that over the top. And now I'm gonna add a bunch of freeze-dried cilantro that I got at the farmer's market and we'll let this just rehydrate in the salad dressing. I'm gonna try to get it completely full. Here we go. Get the lid on it and now our salad dressing is done. That is so delicious. For the chicken marinade, while I have kind of my veggie chopping station out, I'm gonna chop some green onions. The recipe calls for red onions, but I didn't have any. And so I'm gonna use up these green onions because I had these and they needed to be used up. So I might as well put these in the marinade instead of red onion. And I might add some of these to the salad as well. We'll see. Set that aside. Here's our bowl that I'm going to bring the salad in. And our couscous is nice and cooled. I've been kind of fluffing it so it doesn't cool into one big mass. So it stayed nice and fluffy throughout this process. So I'm gonna get this into this bowl. Oop. As much As much of it as I can into the bowl. I'm gonna keep fluffing it up and then I'm gonna start laying some of the veggies on the side. I'm not gonna put any of the roast veggies in here until they're cool. And I'm not gonna stir this up until I put the dressing on and we go to serve it. So I am gonna put some of these green onions here. And I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna get going on the chicken. So what if it was the determination? These look good. Touch them. Oh. Did you hear that? Oh, they're, they're not cooked. I don't, I think they're raw. You know, I think they are. I don't know what's the matter. They look cooked over here. They've pulled away from the side. Yeah, I don't know. We'll cut in, they have to cool completely and then we can yeah. cut into them and then we'll they, see. They will cool better with air underneath instead of the stone. You want me to get out a rack? Yeah, that'd be great. The recipe does, oop, 
the recipe does say they might be a little greasy um, and it, they just need to cool overnight and then okay. it kind of goes away, but I'm just worried that they're not gonna set up in the middle. For the yogurt sauce, we've got our Greek yogurt here and then this is some freeze-dried dill that I got at the local farmer's market and it smells incredible. So I'm gonna put about half that because that was one bunch of dill in here. Now I'm gonna add some cayenne pepper, just a little bit. That was paprika actually, this is cayenne pepper. So I'm gonna add some cayenne pepper, just a little bit. I didn't mean to add paprika, but that will just add good flavor. Now we're gonna add some garlic, some lemon juice, salt, some extra virgin olive oil, a good amount of pepper, and I'm considering adding some cilantro, but I want to taste this first and see. I'm going to mix all this together. It will take a minute for the dill to reconstitute in the yogurt. This is my first time ever freeze drying dill, and it is incredible just from the aroma alone. I haven't tasted it yet, but the aroma smells just like fresh. It has that really potent fresh, delicious dill flavor that you want. Last year, I made tzatziki sauce to go along with the menu. And so this year, this is a just a yogurt dill sauce, yogurt dill sauce. That, that's exactly what I would call it, a yogurt dill sauce. I'm gonna let that sit and kind of rehydrate for a second while I check on the veggies. I already pulled out the sweet potatoes. You can see how they're nice and roasted on one side. They are soft all the way through, but they still have some texture to it. They're not mushy. The cauliflower is here. And that has a little bit longer to cook. And the peas are done. I do not want to overcook the peas. I just wanted to blister them. And they are blistered on the bottom side of the roaster there. So I want these to cool off. I'm actually gonna take these, that's hot, because I don't want them to cook anymore. I'm gonna put them on this sheet just because I know that these sweet potatoes have been out of the oven for a minute. Whoa, those silicone mats are hot, like 425 degrees, because they just came out of the oven. All right, that's perfect. We're gonna let these cool. I'm gonna taste them. Mm. So good. Do you hear that crunch? That probably has another 10 minutes left. Okay, I wanna taste this. Now when I'm cooking, I'm always trying to think of balancing flavors. Sweet, acidic, spicy, sour. Ooh, that's really good. That's really light. The dill, I still think, needs to reconstitute a little bit. Oh no, I can taste the dill now. But yes, I think once it rehydrates, it will be even better. That is good. Let's see. It does need a little bit more salt. I ran out of salt in that shaker, so I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that in here. And then I'm gonna let this sit and this is done. I think this is done. I've got another small tasting spoon out. Yeah, that's all it needed. Oh, that's so good. I'm not gonna add cilantro. I don't want to muddle the herb flavor. I want this to be a dill sauce. Go ahead and make the chicken marinade this sounds delicious so the yogurt sauce and the chicken marinade came from the same recipe it was one recipe had both of the recipes in it if that makes sense or one article online that i found i'm going to double this recipe because like my mom said earlier she is going out of town and she asked if i could double the recipe for her so she could have some chicken to take on vacation with her so I said, no problem. So I just added our green onions to our lemon juice. Now we're gonna add all of the dill that we have here. 
So this recipe is really unique in that it has a lot of warm spices like nutmeg and allspice and it calls for cardamom. My mom does not have cardamom. I have it at home, I could have brought it, but I didn't know she didn't have it. So we're gonna substitute ginger for cardamom. And I didn't bring any of my garlic pucks. I wish I had, but we'll just substitute this roasted garlic and that will be really good too. It calls for 10 cloves. So I'm gonna put probably a table, two tablespoons in here. Then we're gonna put some cayenne pepper, so a little bit of heat. It calls for paprika. It calls for nutmeg, which is really unique. Allspice, it's gonna be really good, I think. Very unique. Now I need to get something to get the rest of the ginger out because she doesn't have very much ginger. So I'm gonna get all the ginger out of this little container that she, oh, you know what? She has ginger, I saw it. My mom keeps all of her bulk spices in here. And when I was looking for the garlic powder, I found ginger. So let's see if I really did, yep, ginger, right here. This is Penzi's too. So I can fill up her ginger. Might as well use the rest of what's in here. I'm just gonna go like that. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of salt. I don't think I added that already some black pepper and about equal parts oil to the lemon juice that I had in there. I probably should have just made this in my Ziploc bag. I'm going to divide this in two and half will be for me and half will be for my mom. I just cleaned up all that spice mess and I thought, you know what, I need to taste this before I add the chicken because once I add the chicken, I cannot taste it. So let's give this a taste test. My mom has a ton of these little spoons, which is really nice for taste testing. Okay, let's see. I still need to prep the chicken, which is what I was gonna do next, but I wanted to kind of get all those spices put away. Surprisingly, it doesn't have a lot of flavor, which is odd because it has a ton of ingredients in it. So I'm gonna add a little more salt, which is a flavor enhancer. Let's mix that up and see if that does the trick. Also, I guess the dill needs to rehydrate a little bit too, which could be part of it. But there's all those spices in there that this should have good amount of flavor to it, just as it is. I just got a whiff of it and wow, does it smell incredible. That's perfect. It's amazing what a little bit of salt can do. Wow, now I can really taste the allspice and the clove. No, I didn't add clove, the allspice and the nutmeg. That's what I'm tasting, the nutmeg. That's good. That's gonna be really good with our veggies and with our yogurt sauce. I could maybe add some honey to it. See, that's the thing, I'm always thinking of adding a little bit of sweetness to kind of balance it, but I do have honey in the veggie dressing, so I think that will add a little bit of sweetness. Plus, we've got the sweetness from the sweet potato and the peas and everything, so I think that will be a balanced meal. Because it's not just balancing the flavor in one particular recipe. It's also trying to think about the whole menu as a whole and balancing the flavor. Not every component necessarily has to be 100% balanced if you're then going to be pairing it with something that when you put the sauce on the thing, like the chicken, if you put the yogurt sauce on the chicken, is that together gonna balance it if you intend to serve the sauce with the chicken, if that makes sense. So now, get these in the sink and I am going to process all these chicken thighs. I am doing chicken thighs because chicken thighs are so forgiving on the grill. It's really hard to overcook them. I'm gonna rinse this off. You all taught me that. Once you sharpen it, it's good to rinse it. And I know that's not technically a sharpener, it's a holder. And my mom is not going to put the chicken on the marinade right now. So I'm gonna divide half of the marinade into a separate container for her. So she's gonna just freeze the marinade. She's gonna take this camping with her. And then when she's ready to make it, she's just gonna thaw the marinade and put the chicken in it. 
and my blondies are starting to set up. So maybe our recipe is not a complete flop. That looks like about half. Yep. So this is gonna go in the freezer for my mom. I just cleaned and trimmed up chicken thighs. Now I am going to put this in the freezer, even though we're gonna be cooking it in two days, because I am going to use this as kind of an ice pack in my cooler. And then I don't have to worry about it. So when I get on vacation, I will take it out of the freezer and I'll let it thaw so that it'll be ready when it's my night to cook. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and I will get it in the freezer so that I can use it as one of the ice packs in my cooler. Now all of our veggies are cooled. I got the cauliflower out of the oven. And the nice thing is because we seasoned up all the different components of the salad, everything just tastes really, really yummy. So there we have it. So this is gonna be a white and green salad. It's gonna be so yummy once it's dressed with the dressing. But for now, I'm gonna put a lid on it and it is just gonna wait for the night we are gonna have this for dinner. Here we have the whole menu. We've got our salad with all of our delicious components and our dressing that is gonna go on top of that. We have our yogurt sauce and our dill chicken. So this is going in the freezer. These are going in the fridge and then I will get them loaded up in the cooler before we go, and I will add an ice pack, obviously, to keep everything cool. We are only going about an hour away, so it'll be easy to keep all of this cool, and I'm just really looking forward to it. Now, I do wanna show you, these blondies may not be a total loss. They have firmed up, they're still very warm, so we're gonna let them cool completely, and then we'll cut into them, and we will see how they go. I'm gonna show you how this whole meal turns out. This is the meal that I am responsible for. I do have a frozen breakfast casserole here. This is sausage, egg, and potato. We made this along with these two things. Here is some salted caramel sauce and some chocolate sauce because I'm gonna be doing fancy coffees the day that I'm responsible for breakfast. So I thought it'd be fun to have some caramel sauce and chocolate sauce to put into our coffees. And I'm gonna bring some local raw milk and we're gonna make delicious coffees and some cold brew coffee as well. And so I am responsible for breakfast one day and dinner a different day. So it's gonna be really great fun. We just take turns that way. Not, any, not one particular person is responsible for all the food for their family or for everybody. And then we can enjoy eating out and enjoy eating at the rental house we got. So it's gonna be really, really fun. Really looking forward to it. Sometimes it's good to have a little balance between eating out and being able to enjoy a little bit more of a relaxed environment of eating at a rental home where we can play games and just enjoy kind of being somewhere other than home. I will show you what this all looks like come together with the chicken cooked and the salad tossed together and the breakfast casserole baked. If you're interested in watching how we made those two sauces and the breakfast casserole, I'll put that video right here. And if you wanna see what I did last year when we went out of town, the other Mediterranean style dinner, I can put that down here <laughs> and you can see that down here. And I will let you know if the blondie brownies turn out because I am very curious to know if those are gonna be any good or not. They are setting up. I think we have hope that they are going to be delicious but only time is gonna tell once they totally cool how they're gonna be. Blondie brownies, apparently I'm having a difficult time finding a really good recipe for that. So if you have a good recipe that you like, I would greatly appreciate it down in the description box because I have had some very delicious blondie brownies, but I have never made a blondie brownie that's turned out perfect. My mom used to make one years and years and years and years ago, and she would bring it on vacation and it was funny when I was telling her what the menu was, she's like, I've never made Blondie brownies before. And I was like, yeah, you have. <laughs> you used to make them and bring them on vacation with us. We used to go to Shasta Lake every year and run a houseboat. And you couldn't really do very much cooking in the houseboat, like baking. And so my mom would do a ton of this kind of like meal prep like I'm doing. And so it was just a lot easier when we were on vacation. That's kind of where I get this idea from. And she doesn't have that recipe anymore because she doesn't even remember making it, but I remember it and it was so good. It was the perfect texture of like chewy and yummy and delicious, but I digress. Now what I need to do is do these dishes 
<laughs> I've got a sink full of dishes. I want to make sure that I leave my mom's kitchen as clean as I found it. I really appreciate my mom taking the time, or not taking the time, but allowing me to come in and use her kitchen because my kitchen is not usable right now. No running water, it makes it hard to do any sort of cooking. I really appreciate running water when you don't have it. So thank you friend for being here as we prepped for going out of town. I'm really looking forward to it. And I just wanna say thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. And I can't wait to see you next time.